Um, so I thought maybe I can talk a bit about insecurity today. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's go back in time. When, when I was born, <laughs> as usually, a contract was drawn up stating all the conditions for my existence. I was happily unaware of that contract in my first years, but through my childhood I got more and more aware of such conditions. Some were clearly stated, like uh, you should see kids but you shouldn't hear them, or uh, thou shalt not be angry. But there were many that weren't and I knew I should know them. If I didn't know them something horrible would happen to me. And other people seemed so confident. So I carefully watched these other people to see how they acted, how they reacted to, my, to me, to what I said, to what I did. And I was always on the lookout for even the slightest signal of disagreement or disapproval. And I was always ready to stop and to change my behavior and what I said. In this way, I got to know the conditions for my existence. Yet, there was something strange going on. And I will come back to that later, because I made a mistake in my text. <laughs> um, yet, there were times that I needed or wanted something, but I couldn't ask. That was one of the conditions I found out. So what I did is try to manipulate people into thinking that doing that thing was their own idea. And I invested in relationships by acting kindly, by being helpful so that people would like me and would be friendly towards me. Praise was a signal that I became dependent upon. If somebody praised me, I knew I was okay. But as it goes, this praise, well, this praise didn't lead to pride, but it led to an addiction because it didn't last long. The effect was uh, quickly wore out and I needed more praise to be reassured. That doesn't mean that there wasn't any pride or arrogance. There was plenty of it. If someone broke a rule and got an unpleasant reaction, I was like, yeah, of course, you broke a rule. And I would secretly look down upon them. I felt contempt about people who got angry. They should have known better, and they should have got a grip on themselves. When someone was enthusiastic about something I didn't like, I felt a bit like, hmm, inferior. And I switched that into a feeling of superiority, like oh, how silly that they like these things. So I had lots of opinions and judgments about almost everything and everyone, and I spent a lot of time complaining, which I still do, unfortunately. But as pride and arrogance go, they set you up for failure. And it's also a very exhausting way of living. Now, at some point, I started to think, now, who drew up this contract? Was it God and my parents? Would have been so easy to put the blame on them. <laughs> I guess I did. <laughs> but slowly, I started to realize that it had actually been me who had carefully constructed this contract, rule by rule. And then I met Buddhism. And thanks to my kind teachers, I'm starting to understand a bit about real refuge. Not refuge in people and things outside of me, but in the Buddha inside me and those around us and the, teach the teachers who rep represent the Buddhas. I started to understand Buddhas as beings who once were like us, but who have developed their full potential and they abandoned all that is unwholesome. Beings that are fearless and totally without pride or arrogance. Beings who are only concerned with the well-being of all sentient beings, unconditionally, however silly or angry or attached they may be. 
and beings that are endlessly patient. However much time we may take to fulfill our own potential, you need a hundred countless eons, I'll be right by your side until you reach your final destination. Now, it's easier to say all this than to really believe it. Surely they have something better to do than be right by my side. <laughs> Still, I haven't come up with another theory that explains the way things are better than this one. <laughs> well, and each morning when I wake up and I think about this precious human rebirth, all the conditions that I have to practice, to develop, having been able to come here in all the conducive circumstances, except for the lack of cabbage, I um, can only think of how wonderful it is to have this opportunity and to make the best use of it. Just imagine, I have met the Buddha Dharma, and after countless great eons, I have encountered the teachings of the Pradimoksha Sutra. And I'm resolved to make the best possible use of these conditions. Now, what do we have here? My contract. <laughs> For safety reasons, I shall not burn it, but I will rip it up. I, I know it will take a long, long time to transform my mind, the habitual patterns that are in the mind, but I will do my best to be mindful and introspective and question the fears and opinions and judgments that come up in my mind, so that slowly, 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 the actions of my three doors will become more skillful. Following the Buddha's teachings, with the help of the Arya beings, our precious teachers, the Sangha community and its members, and all my greatest, I will liberate every sentient being I meet on my path from my appro appropriation and instrumentalization of them. So I will become a person which which with whom other beings can be at ease. And I will assist every sentient being in the path in doing the same for themselves. So, here goes. You are my witnesses. <laughs>